1.2 million years ago, Yellowstone was entangled in a volcanic eruption that nearly gulped the now beautiful area people long to visit. With its beautiful scenery and realistic makeup, this place is bound to be like that for many years to come. But that may be a story of the past as soon as something terrible comes. Join us as we dive into what can turn Yellowstone into rubble. Yellowstone is one of the most beautiful places in America. It is the perfect environment for nature lovers in the Wyoming area. From the elegance of the geysers bathing all of your being in its beauty, to the gracious Grand Canyon that feeds the eyes with everything nature can offer, you will likely feel satisfied when you visit the area. How much wildlife is in the park? Everything is just a beauty, a kind of allure that just draws you in. This is Yellowstone. But that's not all about it. The geysers you see shooting from the ground. Half of all the total geysers in the world are propelled by magma. This magma, usually found underground, is molten hot rock. It is deposited underneath the surface by the quake that it happened earlier in this place. Fortunately, the heat it generates gives us the beauty that often calls us back to Yellowstone National Park. Still, like the old parable, the beauty might be the end of Yellowstone. According to the officials and engineers, noticing the changing pattern in this area, Yellowstone's magma is pulsating quickly. The last time it did that, it ended in a big catastrophe, a very, very, very large quake that would kill millions if it were to happen today. In fact, one of these areas, Norris Geyser, to the northwest of the Caldra, has more than 500 hydrothermal features in it. These violent geysers and pools almost always change from day to day, but a much larger transformation has also been taking place in the area. For more than two decades, an area larger than Chicago, centered very close to the basin, has been inflating and deflating by several inches in erratic bursts. That's scary. How has this situation gotten to this level in recent years? To pin down the causes of such an activity in a place like Yellowstone, where hyperactivity and volcanic behavior is the order of the day, is very hard. But like everything of major concern, a study has to be done to check it. According to the Journal of Geophysical Research, solid earth may help explain why this pocket of land has been breathing in and out. First, it becomes very clear when you learn from Denzel Dryzen of the U.S. Geological Survey's Cascades Volcano Observatory that the Norris has been a center of deformation for a very, very long time. That is, in all likelihood. But that doesn't explain it all. Although there is no doubt that you can take a peek into it, for that sake, back to the central reason. Scientists who tried to know what underscores this phenomenon used decades of satellite-based radar and GPS data of Norris Geyser Basin to model what may have occurred below its surface based on said changes. They figured out, not with so much evidence, but just enough to make a portable claim that it is possible in the late 1990s a body of magma intruded beneath Norris and fluids trapped within the magma spilled out, thereby making their way through the rocky labyrinth above them. It turns out that as the fluids got stuck and pressure built up, the ground would rise too, and when the fluids would escape elsewhere, the ground deflated. Nowadays, magma-derived fluids could sit close to the surface, just a mile or so below the ground. Though in all sincerity, the happenings found do not indicate that the supervolcanoes that created Yellowstone are erupting very soon. Rather, it can explain why the park's geyser, the world's tallest geyser, has been erupting since March 2018. But researchers seeing the changes under the geyser also speculated that it might mean a great pull or an overhauling increase in the likelihood of an explosion taking place in the area. This comes from an enviable study, so it could not have been a lie. Make no mistake, the geology of Yellowstone is quite hard and not easy to pin down. In fact, the investigations of the subsurface are particularly challenging. But despite the complexity of these situations, many of the researchers have come to agree that the injection of a large body of magma and the fluids that escaped during the event are very good explanations for the rising and falling ground that is making us view the situation in a completely different way now. This is why Michael Pollan said, 
that they are only just beginning to understand what the notorious Morris Geyser Basin is like. Let's talk about the Norris Geyser Basin proper. First, it's the oldest thermal area in the Yellowstone area. This is not just by speculation. We know this by considering the evidence that suggests it to us and that it is grounded in real science. It puts it in about 115,000 years back, this old thermal area. Moreover, its hot atmosphere even gives it away. In fact, to break the ice block, it is the hottest in the region totaling about 459 degrees Fahrenheit, a thousand feet or something like it beneath the surface. Now the area's steamboat geyser can explain how easily and fast this scalding part of Yellowstone can drastically change. This 400-foot tall geyser has erupted infrequently over the years. Expectedly, it should be around a century and four days, but that is not the case anymore. The geyser now explodes. Since March 2018, weekly like football matches. In fact, the record of 32 eruptions it set in the same year was overshadowed by 2019, totaling 48. Helen Robinson, a geothermal at Glasgow University, said it jokingly when she said the blinking thing went nuts. While the hyperactivity of this mercurial geyser has captured the public's attention, scientists are not really moved. Instead, they are glued by the dramatic quivering of the basin itself which they think is more or less dangerous. Between 1996 and 2004, an 18-mile-long area rose 4.7 inches, only to sink back 2.8 inches between 2005 and 2013. Then, unsurprisingly, the region suddenly shot up again at a rate of 5.9 inches in a year between late 2013 and early 2014. According to many observing the occasion, that was the highest pace of uplift ever observed within the Yellowstone National Park. Quite surprising? Just wait. Again, around March 2014, a magnitude 4.9 earthquake rocked Norris Geyser Basin, bringing the seemingly non-stoppable uplift to a sudden halt. The ground, little by little, began to fluctuate between sinking and rising until early 2019 when it began to subside but the basin is now around five inches higher than it was in 2000. This is very much a problem of shooting up and traveling down. It probably is not ending anytime soon. We must learn. Now we will consider underground churnings. Radar and GPS data from satellites were employed to track the Norris Geyser Basin deformation. On undergoing unprecedented deep research, Geologists suspected that the upheaval began when magma rose just a bit close to about nine miles beneath the surface. Thus, they supposedly said probably occurred between 1996 and 2001. Remember that this basin is just outside the northern rim of the supervolcano's youngest caldera. With that, it is safe to say that it sits on a line of faults and vents known as the Norris Mammoth Corridor, since that is where the fault is. They came to the conclusion that this is the place where these two weak zones intersect. Moreover, it is where magma ideally found an easier way to intrude. A scientist, Zurizen, confirms this, and it is more than necessarily a good point as it is being taken as such. Undoubtedly, the magmatic intrusion was responsible for the 1996 to 2004 uplift event. As the magma cooled, fluids already dissolved within it could bubble out in an upward spiral like a flow of water from a pipe pumped by a machine. Without mincing words, this magnificent process lowered the internal pressure of the magma body, causing it to deflate like a leaky balloon. With enough confidence, this case caused the ground to lower again between 2005 and 2013. The escaping fluid becoming, in the process, repeatedly trapped in pockets beneath layers of rock causes the ground to rise in fits and starts ever since. This magmatism and hydrothermal activity cycle has been extremely hard and difficult for normal scientists to identify and document. In talking about the new model, Poland said it is a reasonable hypothesis, but it still needs to be determined. For Robinson, sources of fluids other than the body of magma, such as heavy snows in recent years, collect in pockets and escape elsewhere as the landscape inhales and exhales out. 
Through their relentlessness, the team has now accrued evidence that magnet-derived faults are now sitting just beneath the surface of Norris Geyser Basin. Hydrothermal explosion craters dating back thousands of years can be found all over the region, caused by geologic pressure cookers of confined, scorching water that violently depressurize and flash boil into steam if the rock cracks. This event is all but impossible to forecast. How likely are we to have a killer blast anytime soon? Although major explosions are rare, a new blast could take place in Norris Geyser Basin at any time. This depends on whether fluids have pooled close enough to the basin surface or not, because in such an instance, hydrothermal explosions may be slightly more likely to occur, though the scientist Zorizin does not seem to be moved by that findings. He feels that because the rocky plumbing networks are remarkably complex, making small, undetectable changes constantly, increasingly, the chances of a blast decrease more and more. Because of his impact, they have now regarded the possibility of a blast as highly speculative and not really something to worry about. This finding has led to the advice that the area is open to visitors. Furthermore, the team also wonders if the accumulation of magmatic fluids could be explained by the recent record-breaking number of eruptions of the steamboat, given the fact that the geyser had similar upticks in activity in the 1960s and early 1980s which is also linked with great confidence to basin breathing cycles. Despite this submission, we cannot just assume that everything is in place. Here is something worth considering. Why, for God's sake, is this particular geyser putting on a show when several others remain unusually quiet? Why not Echinus, which sits right next to Steamboat? It is very easy to consider the question of non-professional scientists. Still, considering the question in all its shades, you'll find some reasonability. What's more, the scientists in Poland also ask the same question. Even much more pressing is the caldera inside Yellowstone National Park. Dubbed a supervolcano due to its capacity to inflict global devastation in the event of a super eruption, this magnanimous stuff is quite scary. You probably knew that it was formed during the last three big events over the past 2.1 million years. With the most recent Lava Creek eruption occurring approximately 630,000 years ago. Located between the states of Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho, the United States Geological Survey constantly monitors the area so that history can repeat itself. If this kind of vigilance can be zoomed in on a particular area in Yellowstone, would you still think the ticking time bomb could not go off soon? When people who think we should believe that things are now blowing up anytime would give a rejoinder, they said the link between Steamboat's hyperactivity and the magma intrusion is circumstantial at best. Nevertheless, some are also ready to say that the timing does line up. Zorizin, for example, said he and his colleagues will try to study the fluids that bubble up through the surface to see if they have the chemical fingerprints of a magmatic origin in the future. For now, it seems quite hard to know. Meanwhile, we should consider the unrelenting work of this scientist. For example, the fact that they could draft a narrative that might explain these dramatic changes is a testament to decades of accumulated data and modern scientific techniques. 20 years ago, it would have been so impossible. What type of eruption will happen in Yellowstone if the magma erupts again? Scientists have said that the last Yellowstone eruption was very, very disheartening. It is 1,000 times greater than the notorious 1980 Mount St. Helens eruption that killed 56 people and thousands of animals and scorched hundreds of square kilometers of land in Washington and Oregon. No one knows the shape that the next one is going to cause, but it is a big deal, depending on one thing or another. In the case that a large cauldron-forming eruption was to occur at Yellowstone, its effects would undoubtedly be felt worldwide. Such an indescribable giant eruption would pull along with it regional effects such as falling ash, short-term changes that could last any time from years to an unreliable number of decades, and global climate. Pyroclastic flows could affect those parts of the surrounding states of Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming that are closest to Yellowstone. Pyroclastic flows often contain a high-density mix of hot lava blocks, pumice, ash, and volcanic gas. 
Their movement is one of the highest speed down volcanic slopes. Typically, they follow valleys. Most pyroclastic flows that have been documented to occur usually consist of a lower basal flow, of course fragments that move along the ground, and a turbulent cloud of ash that rises above the basal flow in the area. Sometimes ash may flow from this cloud over a wide area downwind from the occurrence of the pyroclastic flow. There is still no evidence that this will not be the same case this time. Pyroclastic flow, you must know, usually destroys everything on its way, from large boulders to big trees, and even big houses that are not standing well. This means things are going to speak poorly whenever it strikes. One should not engage in doomsday predictions before it happens. But what is the use of telling something good if the bad is going to happen anyway? We only need to consider it. Other places in the United States, especially places that are extremely far away, would only be impacted by falling ash. The ash would decrease as we move far from the eruption site. Eruptions of such caliber usually form craters, broad volcanic depressions created as the ground surface collapses due to the withdrawal of partially molten rock, magma, below. Luckily for everyone in the world, since everyone will feel it, the chances of this sort of eruption at Yellowstone are extremely small, even in the next few thousand years. As we've been saying, nothing represents the last statement on this issue. People are still researching. The fact that only a minuscule chance exists is not the same as zero, meaning that the ticking time bomb could well go on to blast eventually. As officials of the United States Geological Survey have stuck to their guns that this case scenario is unlikely, the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory says there is another possibility, although not as lethal as the one we have mentioned. They are here with evidence too, not just baseless propositions without accompanying evidence. Severing more and looking more deeply into the situation even, although they had already looked into it so well, they have come out to tell us that the stuff will actually be hydrothermal explosions or lava flows. Lava flows are still preferable to the first one we mentioned. At least no record has proven that they are as devastating as they are. For example, instead of a loud outburst and unprecedented damage, lava flow usually flows from the ground, little by little, running its course over an extended period. Not the same thing as the cauldra forming explosion. Moreover, they are also very, very rare. Just that they are much more likely than the cauldra forming explosion. That is, if you were told that the cauldra forming one will happen and the lava flow will happen, you should accept things really, really go south. Should be expecting the lava flow. Take, for example, the fact that the last lava flow took place around 700,000 years ago. Evidence of them still abounds. If you hike along the park's trail, you can see those eruptions in distinct rock layers. Meanwhile, some evidence of younger lava flows can be found near the cliffs surrounding the Upper Geyser Basin near Old Faithful. Old Faithful, you should know, is a geyser and one of the park's most popular tourist attractions. What do you think about the cauldra-forming explosion coming soon? And what is your thought about an explosion at all in the park? Let us hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe.